it's recording yeah so today we we won't learn anything new we will just enhance whatever we learned before so for arrays and objects we talked about last class but of course those include the for loops the all those things so we we will mention those um a lot um and uh again part of the arrays is to continue and we will mention some of these functions on the arrays we already saw some of them on the work and as it says here no map no filter or reduce <laughs> no yeah. um and the again if you feel like you want to go on it you can go yourself <laughs> and try to figure out what they do but they are too complicated for now and most of them actually run for loops if uh, down like in the engine of it that's what they do basically so again as i told you before there are a lot of libraries or tools out there that people build to do things for us and that's basically a map or reduce like it does things for us but we should know the the small things before the complicated ones <laughs> so and because of all these small things together then we can build those complicated ones so um so yeah let's just i mean uh, i think i'll just go through all these uh, array uh names things so and again all this code uh, will be available tomorrow ish whenever i have the videos uploaded so you don't have to write it down while i'm uh, talking about it um so array of names and now let's have a couple of names uh, and it's just gonna be these names it's very boring names but yeah okay so the pop um method mm -hmm. and um, actually I'm gonna start doing that because that's like my finger on points there never points to the plus uh, so on on my homework correction I might have a lot of commas here instead of plus and it's just because that's what I do every single day like my fingers get very used to those things and again, instead of concatenate, uh, concatenating the strings to each other, what it does is that um, it sends as a parameter. So uh, in, in your um, code, you can actually control on Windows and on Mac command, I think, uh, click the, um, the names. And actually, as you can see, what we talked about comments it appears there <laughs> so that's very good for documentation sometimes just by going through the javascript library you can understand what it does as well just by reading the comments mm -hmm. so for instance the log whenever we hover it it says message any and then optional parameters any any is just the, the type the type of the variable so any means any it can be number arrays objects whatever and uh yeah i mean we could also do this but this removes the array from it it's basically it creates everything into one string by putting the plus by putting the comma in here i just want to say we are going to show the pop i mean this can be whatever we want right mm -hmm. um it's just so that then on a console i can differentiate where are the logs from what mm -hmm. this is a very personal thing i like to have and then this can be whatever uh, we send in it can be a string it can be an array and by doing in comma basically javascript puts both in their own types on your command line so like this in here i have pop which is if i want to search where do i have the pop i can find it and then in here i have the actual result of the array and the array i can expand it and blah 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 all those things so i can have both strings and arrays in one console log that's the reason why I really like the comma instead of the plus. Um, okay, so now let's see what pop does. And um, yeah, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> so on a document here on GitHub, 
it says pop, push, shift, unshift, length, index off. The, um, the truth, truth is that they are not really the same. And uh, I would consider that they are wrong because this is actually functions. Pop and push is a function. So because we just wrote array of names dot pop, this is not a function. This is the key of the function, basically. So it actually shows us that, yeah, pop is a function that has something inside. It doesn't even show us what is inside, but yeah. So sometimes you might call a function on an array, uh, and we will see what pop actually does. <coughs> and the uh, things doesn't happen because you might missing the parentheses. So yeah, now we have D. So maybe you already know what's happening. Can anyone tell me what did pop do to the array? <laughs> Just take the last index. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So JavaScript pop. The internet sometimes it's weird. Every time I move this, I get the internet. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Actually, oh yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I should print the array after because it does more than getting the last one. Um, yeah. So basically, pop of that array just got the last one of the array for himself, for the value of it, and then the array was changed into no longer with the last. So pop is basically removes the last um, value of an array, but it keeps that value. Uh, and by that, it means that if we assign it to um, mm -hmm, something like this, if we assign it, uh, the value is not, not lost technically. Now the value is there. So we can use, I mean, I cannot really find the use case for it, but sometimes you might want the exact last value of an array. Um, but if you use that uh, again, it will take the Yeah, key. it will take the next one, the next one, the next, until it's there's nothing to take. Mm -hmm. I'm actually, let's try it. I'm not sure what happens when there's nothing else. This should be enough. No, another one. Yeah, it, it starts to say undefined because there's nothing else to take from it. So, so yeah, by running pop a lot of times in an array, you can just empty it. But again, the values are not lost. They are, I mean, in this case, they are lost because we are not assigning it to any variable. But um, if in some exercise you need to figure out the last value of an array, yes, you can build a for loop or you can get the index of the length of the array or or you can just use pop. <laughs> so again, sometimes some problems you can solve with one function instead of having to build a whole function for it. I just want to say, if you want to take the max, you can just set it up like by number and take the last, you can take the max. So you only have the max. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, but uh, again, there are some exercises that this might be useful. Uh, it's just that it's something that it's uh, good to know, uh, let's say. Um, again, we can have a look here. Yeah, the documentation removes the last element from an array and returns it, which means that it keeps that array. And uh, for instance, the other function we saw the other day, push, the one that puts item, items into an array, it's also here and it's also documented here, as you can see, very well described, I think. Um, but yeah, this pop removes and gets the value of the last one. Now, array of names two, just because that one is already modified and I will just use the same ones because it's quite kind of easy to see what it does. Um, uh, push 
I will mention. I mean, we already mentioned it, but I will go to shift. No, so console log, and now I'll just write an array of names too, if I can. Two dot shift, not eighty nine, but function. Okay, I should write the console log here just to separate things. So it's easier to see where, yeah. So this one, as you can probably imagine, uh, if I show you the array now, this one does the opposite. So this one gets the first, um, the first element of the array, again, this one is not really the array yet, but it's exactly the same. So gets the first one and keeps that value for himself. So yeah, you, you have one function to do for the first, one function for the last. The others, you're on your own. <laughs> but again, we learned for loops. We know how to get the indexes of. So it's, I mean, everything has their purpose. Um, to be honest, this type of functions, uh, I don't really use them that often in a work day because it's not common to wanting the first element or the last one or, I mean, it's just that if we need to, let's say, remove the last element and for some reason that's a pro, I don't know, like, I, again, I cannot find out a day in my life where I had to use it, but, <laughs> but it might be uh, uh, useful. Um, oh. Yeah, I should write JavaScript and shift. Yeah, that's the one it chose. I don't understand this internet. Um, yeah, this one is um, more useful, let's say. <laughs> um, in the case of the order of the array matters, right? Like. You want to have this name, then that name, then, uh, okay, let's actually figure out an example for that. So, const uh, wrong, 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 alphabet. Is it like that? Maybe, I don't know. Um, and in here, we have this, right? Now, if we really want to add an A to it, well, we should not, uh, if we use push, if we use uh, this, it will add it at the end. Because this just, the, the push does not care about the order of the array, just pushes things inside, literally, that's the name of it, is push, <laughs> just does not care about anything at all. So mm, this is wrong, right? The A should be before. I mean, if you want to print out this nicely, it won't be the correct alphabet. So that's where this guy comes in handy. So if we have this instead, then it added the A at the beginning instead of it at the end. Um, because one, tricky thing uh, let's uh, can I print it here okay so now we have it I need divisions or else my brain cannot see it <laughs> but here when you uncheck just like the, thing, the, the last value of the state or do I check a push uh, sorry? The unshift, it just retains the, the, what you have done before, or um, it work as a shift, as a, as a push, but it's put in the beginning. Yeah, the, the unshift is, again, I think the names were very badly chosen, yeah. because shift and unshift have nothing to do with each other, like okay, no, no, zero. No. <laughs> uh, they should have called it push first or something, yeah. I don't know, something related to push, because 
that's basically what it, it is doing. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, um, then you, you need to write it twice. Uh, I, th I think shift, yeah. Yeah, you need to write it two times because you cannot send a parameter saying remove two or... So you need to write like this and then again and again to remove as many as you want. Um, I mean, it would be nice if we could just send like a number there and then removes first three. But uh, again, if you click here, you can see like there is no parameter, so you cannot send in anything on it. Uh, and I, I mean, for that, in order to remove, let's say, the first two elements of an array, I would use a for loop mm. and just remove, uh, then uh, call shift two times on the array, yeah. something like that. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah that as well. Uh, I think that's the lab. Uh, it's not here, but yeah, we can mention those ones after. Uh, I'm just trying now to figure out this thing just to see okay okay actually this is good yeah it's because <laughs> yeah there is an error on our chrome yeah. as you can see <laughs> and it's not an error on our code it's an error on our chrome uh, because i wanted to show that but apparently Um, so yeah, and this might be a Chrome issue, I don't know, or whatever issue. This is completely wrong, this one here, this A should not be here because it's not there at all. Uh, again, what I wanted to show is that this B is under position zero of the array, for starters. And then you put an A, and in order the A to be in the beginning, needs to be under position zero. So basically, the, <coughs> what the unshift uh, what this unshift has to do is to, it has a for loop, like down the line, it has something that pushes and creates a new array where it puts the first element and then everything after an element. So I mean, we could create our own unshift right now with what we know. By like giving it an array, we could do something like that, that creates another array just with the, with the same ones plus something else. But, uh, but again, uh, as I've been saying, like sometimes you might take too long to figure out an answer and the answer was right here. Uh, it's a function that you just need to call on it. And uh, that's not wasted time at all. If you spend time coding something and then you figure out like, oh, I could have used this function. It, feel, it hurts, I know, but, uh, <laughs> but it's not wasted because you did some code yourself. So it's never wasted. Um, that happened to me more than I would expect. <laughs> Every time I would learn some new programming language because I wanted to do my things and then somebody told me like, oh, you could have used that. You know, just like, shit. I... <laughs> like, do I still get paid at least? Yeah, you do, so that's fine. Um, yeah, the, the push, again, we, we saw that one working. Um, This one, we can either do it on an empty array or on a already uh, filled up array. And then up here, oh, that's a console log of empty. No, I'm the wrong one. <laughs> So yeah, now it only has one, but if it would already have something inside, it adds the one at the last, because again, push just pushes stuff into it. Um, yeah, the length, we all saw it working before. We use it a lot in our for loops, but, uh, oops. But again, the length is not uh, is not a function. 
So if we write it as a function, it tells us it's not a function. <laughs> um, that's why it's a bit weird for all of these ones here to be together because they are not really the same, all of them. Um, but, but again, if you use uh, like your tools usually try to help you. If you do something wrong, you'll see the error and 80% of the times the error is ex explains to you what needs to be done. 20% of the times you have to go to Google because <laughs> the errors are not that helpful. In JavaScript that happens a lot, but again, right now I don't remember any example, but it does happen. Um, and let's just check as we talked about the index of, actually this one we can just uh, index. Now this one is going to be tricky because uh, we have numbers. <laughs> um, yeah, now here, do they have it explained? JavaScript index of. Um, yeah, it does. So this is the important part. On our example, we have three, four, four, five, and then one. And I'm asking for the index of four. So now you, you can tell me, oh, but there's two times, like four exists twice. But uh, basically this index of returns the first, like if it finds it, it leaves the array alone. It just tells you where it is, the first uh, occurrence of that specific value. Again, in here mentions string, but this also, uh, string is an array, technically. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one thing that it's a little bit important if you are working with numbers. Like if you try to find, does this number exist? Or where is the position of this number? That might be tricky or Again, numbers or letters, if we uh, const testing letters A, B, then C, and then B. In this case, if we ask for the index of B, it will tell us one, the index is one. And uh, if in the exercise, for some reason, uh, we want to know, tell me every place is where B exists. We cannot use index of for that because it only tells us the first time. And even if we run it again and again, it always tells us the first time. So in this case, if we would like the tell me everywhere, uh, all the indexes of B, then we'll have to go to our for loop friends where uh, we'll have a E equals zero. E testing. Oh no, length. E plus plus. And then if mm -hmm. equal 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 B. And then this one will tell us where it is. Now, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure, <laughs> but um, but this index of behind the scenes can might might actually be something like this, right? Where it goes through the array that you give to it and checks is it there, and then it just instead of console log, of course, it returns that. So. Again, that's why it's very good to know these tools, but if you don't know them, you can still code <laughs> as long as, of course, you understand what's the problem we have to solve. And, um, and again, those tools only exist to make our lives a little bit easier because instead of writing all this code, if, if it would only be for the first occurrence of one, instead of writing all this code, we only need to write that code. So it makes our lives a little bit a little bit easier. Um, 
yeah, now it's not mentioned here, uh, but I think we should talk about the JavaScript array slice. It's slice and splice. Spli yeah, splice. <laughs> splice and slice. This is ridiculous. If I move this, my connection becomes better. And this is slice, right? Yeah. So by the definition, uh, the slice method, again, it returns the selected elements as a new array. So instead of actually changing the, because every time we use those, um, these ones here, the pop, shift, whatever, it completely changes your current array, right? You, you cannot, like if you have another thing to use that array, it's basically gone, uh, not gone, but it's changed already. Uh, but this one actually creates a new one. So it, um, some some people are a bit against of using this type of uh, tools because if you use it a lot it creates a lot of memory leaks because it always creates more and more and more and more and more <laughs> arrays so you, can't use it in loop. Uh, you can because again it's not that heavy let's say but but some people might say like oh you could do this by hand like yeah you could you could build your own for loop and mm -hmm. splice the array into smaller chunks if you if that's what you want but um but yeah, I mean, I would say just use it. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just put the console log here. And um, I don't like var. So for instance, here, if we console log the fruits, And right. Um, again, as you saw before uh, on this example up there uh, on the A B C D, the same array was actually changed into B C D because. So if down, all the way down the, the, the file, we want to use that array for something else, we need to know that it was changed already. So this one's, um, so giving this array with, there is some fruits on it, and the slice, again, if we click on it, we can see, basically returns a section of an array, starting point, ending point. Um, so giving a start and an end, and by start and end it's the index, so starts at zero always. Uh, giving a start and an end, it just gives that fraction as an array. Whoop. I, did I just change this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so in here we say like, okay, from one, from the position one to the position three, I want that part of the array in here now. So as you can see, we, we still have the fruits, and then this one actually creates another array for us down here. And, um, and yeah, as we can see, it, can it, yeah. So this was the original array. And because we said from one to three, now this is where it comes tricky. Um, is the, positioning in arrays like it is messed up as, as probably you already know so for instance when you say the length of an array um, again the real length is five but there's only four indexes because we said here from one to three uh, we could like zero one two three right but this one is not included because yeah so, so it's in reality, it's from one to two, including two. 
And this, I believe, the reason why this works like that is so that you can always send, say that you want an array from something to the length of the array. So you never ask for more than you can, let's say. And by doing that, it will always return the last one. So like instead of returning five, it can return four. Mm -hmm. So the, the second parameter of it, even though it says the end, it's not including that end. But can we add plus one? Yeah, 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 yes, of course. Uh, I mean, in here, uh, now, for instance, if we say four, then it will give you uh, probably an error. I don't know. Let's try it. <laughs> so if we now say from this fruits, fruits dot length. So this is still okay, right? It just basically removed the one, let's say. Mm -hmm. So now if we say plus one, actually it didn't give us any error, which is good. Uh, let's just see uh, if it's because we are sending in there. Sometimes this might uh, matter, sometimes it doesn't. So if we do it outside here, new, if we say plus three, no, it's still, yeah, it, it just works. This, honestly, I was not sure what would happen in that case, but it is a good thing to try. So actually, yeah, if you're asking for, I want from this to infinity, well, possible, but to a million, it will still have to give you only what you can and not throw any error. So that's, that's actually good because honestly, I think if we would build ourselves this logic, we might fail on those cases of if somebody asks for something, yeah. might be memory leaks, whatever. So this function takes care of that for us. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and the slice, this one is actually quite, um, quite useful. At least, again, in my uh, work life, I use this quite often whenever I have to manipulate data inside of the arrays, something like that. For instance, I don't know, we have all the average or I don't know, all the tickets of this week or of this month and we need the tickets for the first week and everything is on in one huge array. Then it's very easy to say like, okay, give me all from one to seven or from zero to seven. It's the first week and things like that. So this one be, might be very, uh, very useful for your, for your daily life, even to solve a lot of different problems, the, the slice. At least I honestly use it a lot. Um, hmm. Now, the splice. This one, usually I always mess up <laughs> these two. <laughs> but um, yeah, we started with the slice. We understand the slice. So now the splice, let's just see. Um, yeah. Console log. And now we have this here. And we cannot have it the same name, so we'll just call it new fruits. And let's put it here. Actually, I think we should log this one because this does not return an array returns or does it? It might. Oh, there's nothing. Um, oh, yeah, it's because this one actually modifies the array, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we added lemon and kiwi yeah this one is a bit more tricky because it has a lot of um, parameters we can send so yeah it removes removes elements from an array giving it the start and how many elements we want to delete uh, right yeah mm -hmm. so for instance if we give um, start on zero and elements array length and then it removes everything 
-hmm. because yeah, um, if we give start zero and delete one, removes the first one, I would hope. Um, so yeah, it again it. Um, in this case, might be useful, as I said, like on a, on a pop, it removes the last element. Mm -hmm. This one could be useful to remove the last three elements. Or you can stop in the middle. Yeah. This one you can use for more, uh, again, I say like you're on your own, but <laughs> there is other tools that you can use. It requires a bit more logic, of course, because you need to be able to count, to figure out where's the part where I want to remove from, all those things. But yeah, but uh, this one also has extra stuff. Yeah. Again, instead of uh, yeah, you can add, <laughs> you can replace. Yeah, in, instead of having different functions for different things, no, they just decided to put a lot of logic in one. Again, uh, we cannot do anything about it, <laughs> but we don't have to use that. We can just use it to remove things. Um, yeah, we can insert elements. In, in the place of the removed ones, basically. So that's kind of what we are doing here. So we, we are gonna do, uh, insert uh, lemon and kiwi here, right? So basically we, uh, yeah, we actually, anything, yeah, uh, it, exactly. In this yeah. case, we didn't even remove because we are saying on a position two, remove nothing but insert these two values. So insert something. So for instance, now I just changed this to one. So now we should remove, yeah, we removed Apple <laughs> and still inserted the other two, basically. Um, yeah, in, in this case, uh, you can say this uh, dot length divided by two, right? So in this case, we will insert those on the middle of an array. Of course, we should pay attention if this gives us some decimal, it might mess up. So for instance, if you need, for some reason, you need to insert something in the middle of an array, we could use this and you could use it to calculate, okay, we get, if we have the length divided by two, usually that's the middle. Of course, we should make sure that if this is, um, if now we have one more element, now we are screwed because the middle now it's, <laughs> it's not an int, it's a decimal number. Mm -hmm. So now we need to make sure we either round up or down. Like there is more logic, of course, but it's something that these tools can help us. Uh, doing it, of course. Um, for instance, this should still work, right? Yeah, because... Uh, remember... Is this a fruit? I don't know. <laughs> okay, it still work. Yeah. Yeah, because probably the slice should have... I mean, in here we cannot really see what code is behind the scenes, but it should handle some logic if we send some decimal number, I would hope. Um, so yeah, this, again, the slice is very, 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 very useful. The splice, it's a tricky one because it does more than I think it should, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Um, yeah, and again, map filters and re reducers is not for now. If you're curious, you can look into it yourself. <laughs> you can also ask me after classes or something if you have some questions about it. Um, yeah, let's just array in here. We should, no. It doesn't have it here. It doesn't. Not really. What about in the, yeah, in this one. Okay, well, internet, yeah. 
yeah, okay, this one is, a, the documentation is a little bit better. On the left corner here, it's like light blue, but... Um, and this is in a global objects array. Again, in here, if you're curious, this is the, no, not this part, this is the properties we, uh, this property we use a lot, the length. Uh, these ones are not useful at all. And then in here, as you can see, comes a lot of methods. There is a lot of stuff you can do with an array. Um, again, there is the includes here, index of, uh, there is the map. If you want to read about it, you can just click and check the pop, push. There is the reduce. There is like a lot of methods. Some of them might have a, a little flag here. Others might have a trash bin, which means that it's no longer supported on your versions. This is something you should definitely pay attention whenever you're doing something web development related. It's things might not be supported in some browser versions. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, we are not there at this point. We still have some like all our code is still supported everywhere. But you will find out in the future that, for instance, uh, Internet Explorer does not support half of the shit you have to do in the real world. So it's very hard. You have to do special cases for Internet Explorer. But right now, you don't. Right now, everything still works. Is there someone still using Internet Explorer? Yeah, there is a lot of people actually. Yeah, using, a lot of people using Internet Explorer. Yeah, like, sadly, there is a lot of people. But in your, like, in your line, like, which version do you use? Six or seven? Um, no, for instance, we, I mean, most of the companies, uh, the way that it works in supporting browsers is that, of course, you have analytics, so you know who is using what. And some companies, they just put like, okay, if 2% of our, let's say 2% of our users are using this browser, we have to support. Mm. Some companies say like, we only support 10% or more. It depends uh, a lot. But for instance, right now, uh, Internet Explorer is 11. Less than 11? Mm that's almost impossible to use. <laughs> like, it's almost impossible to find a machine that uses that. So, but, but yeah, again, right now in our, in our code, we don't really care about that. CSS, that's very important. On CSS, things evolved a lot recently and a lot of browsers are behind. So sometimes, I don't know, if you use Internet Explorer on your website, it might look completely different. That's because Internet Explorer might not support it. But, um, but again, that comes with, like, if I'm building my own website and I have some websites that I built and I don't care if people that cannot see it on Internet Explorer, I don't want those people to visit my website, honestly. So, <laughs> but if, if your work, if your company requires you to support, then yes, you need to figure out how. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, that might be a bit tricky sometimes. This but um, in the LSX, the one JavaScript. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I mean, uh, wh what we are learning right now, it's actually the old, uh, it's still on ES5, I think. Like, I, all this is still supported back, back, back in the days. Because again, this is the core of JavaScript. So everything we are using here should not uh, be a problem. Um, I will put this URL here. Uh, this is just the documentation of the arrays from Mozilla. and. Again, they, they are very good in documentation, better than most of the other. <laughs> um, and yeah, I would, uh, I mean, you should not go through all of them. Of course, definitely don't do that unless you have a lot of free time. But uh, you can, like if you see some name that you find interesting, like you can just click on it and check what's going on behind the hood of that. And how, or how can I use it? Instead of using, for instance, my for loop, can I use a for each? That's also possible. It's a bit trickier because it's different, but it's also possible. And that's something we will definitely talk about on uh, JavaScript 2, I think, or 3. I'm not sure which one. Yeah. But uh, right now, we will use the regular for loop, the one we, we know and we care. <laughs> um, yeah, and that was arrays, basically. Um, we will also talk about 
objects now. I will just create a different file so this one is not so dirty. And I'll call it objects. Come on. Yep. And uh, I will actually comment this one out so that uh, everything we have, like things don't get the console dirty. So, console log objects. Come on, go there. Yeah. Okay, so this we saw last week or yeah i'm not sure where <laughs> we saw but how to define objects so that uh, instead of uh, on the array we had the uh, indexes like index 0 1 3 4 whatever on the object we actually have keys and those keys have names uh, yeah and it's, it's better than saying names and pointing to a key called name because this is the name of the key name mm -hmm. So you can have age, you can have address, you can have all sorts of things. And now I'll just copy this object and we will basically work with it. Um, I will do this because of my brain. Like I like to have things a bit, yeah, indented. In JavaScript, that's not that important in some programming languages is very important how things are indented because or else the code does not run in javascript that's not important you can have everything in the line you can have yeah it's a bit wild west but it's okay um that's just street right i don't like this user Right. Okay, so now in here we have an object and the object, um, and we saw this also the other day, um, as you actually see we said name, age and address, but when we print out the object, things come a bit in a different order, mm. let's say, because object we cannot trust, again, it, it's not different, it's actually uh, alphabetic. So, Whenever we have an object, again, we cannot ask for the first element of the object or the last element of the object. That does not exist on the object because it's not an array. It's an object. <laughs> uh, so what we can ask on the object is for the elements of it. So for instance, we can say user and again, your VS code or the tool you're using should uh, help you on showing you the properties of that object. So when I say dot, I can actually say, see that I can choose an address, age or name. So if I do this, now I have still the object and now I have the name of the object. Um, and yeah, and this we, we, we kind of saw it also on the last week. Now, one thing, and let me just have a look here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can talk about that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, the same way we did in arrays. Uh, we can also... <laughs> actually, no, this gives us undefined because all those keys are strings. So, we need to pass as a string. And now it gives us the correct one. Uh, now, if we send, uh, I don't know, username, this key does not exist in there, right? So it will just tell us undefined. If, it's, if we send position zero, as we used to, still undefined, does not exist, because this is not an array, it's an object. But we can say H. 
for instance, and it gives us the age of the user. Oh, no, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so again, objects are very, very, very useful to build data sets. And, uh, and again, that might be a bit earlier to mention this, but it's something we need to get used to it. Um, not that far, <laughs> but, uh, but going there, but going to databases things. Um, again, th this is useful to have like local data like we have here, like we need data to be processed to show like a user object like we have here uh, or something else. Now, one thing I will mix here is objects and arrays because we can have, I mean, we already have arrays with strings, arrays with numbers. We have objects with strings, objects with numbers. We can have objects with arrays and with strings and with numbers, right? We just need to put them together. So now instead of users, let's have user with an S. And now the syntax has to be very correct or else things go crazy. So I want an array of users, right? So in this case, now I just need to build a user inside with a name and age 24. And that's it for now. We don't need anything else. Now, in order to add another, um, again, this the way I'm writing might be confusing. I'm not sure if it is. I'm just writing an array of numbers here as we know them, right? We know that zero, one, two, three, oh, that was a four. Um, this can be written like this, because again, it does not matter if everything is in one line or multiple lines. Oh, sorry. Um, we can write it like this. In this case, it does not make sense because in each line is only like one tiny number. But if we have a very big uh, numbers, for instance, we had like the weekdays, right? Like Sunday, Monday, blah, 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 all in a row. Like we have to scroll to the left or right to see where the numbers are. So we can actually have it on each line like this. And this one. Like we can have it like this. There's nothing wrong. It's actually more readable. I think, uh, again, if you like it in one line, that's fine. The reason why I'm mentioning that now is because now instead of a string, we are going to put an object. So, and an object is quite big. So it would look weird, everything in one row. It, it would look very confusing to figure out where it starts, where it ends. And that's the reason why I'm writing it like this. So now, uh, I'll just write another object and then I explain it. Uh, and this is not a string, it can be a number, right? So now, as we know, this array, this is index zero of the array. That's one, two, three. Now, this whole thing is index zero of the array. Because this is an, an object always starts with this uh, curve uh, bracket. So this is index zero, this is index one. And this is an array of objects. So now for instance, if we, making a lot of noise down there, <laughs> not clear, log. If we print out users, like this is how it shows an array, right? It's an array and then inside there is something it's not really showing us because it's a lot of stuff, but we can expand and now we can see position zero, there is that whole thing. Position one, there is that whole thing. So now like we do in arrays, we can say, give me this one only. And it 
gives almost, of course, because our object is different, but it gives us almost the same as up here. So now we can actually, wait, I will actually do this, this, and, and still we have now the properties of that object to choose from. So in here I have an array with two objects, and I get the first element, and from that first element I can get name or age or whatever is inside. So as you can imagine, you can build a list of users, for instance, a list of, and I'm saying the word list, but it's an array of users of anything, basically. And those things, instead of being only strings, can actually be an object that you can ask for specific things, a name, an age, uh, address, whatever properties you define. <laughs> um, now, let's keep this one right. And I'll just copy this whole thing because I want to show another way of doing things a bit. Let's put an empty one here, array of big days. I'm just changing the name so that it doesn't throw us errors. Users array, users array, and users array. So yeah, now it prints out the same. Yeah. Now, what I want to show you, and I mean, I don't know if you guys tried or if I have mentioned, but um, we can do this. Right, we have a string. Monday with the value Monday. So now in here we can actually call that, right? I mean, there's, oh, I'm missing something here. If I say console log of the array of weekdays, it shows show Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, right? Monday actually comes from up there. Again, this is a bit useless because, yeah, and I mean, if I change the M, big M to a small M, it should also update here so that we make sure it really comes from there. But again, this is a bit useless. I'm actually using the exact amount of characters to define the same thing, right? This doesn't make sense, <coughs> but it might make sense here, right? That's the reason why I'm showing it with a simple string. Now let's... I don't know, let's call const John. We can use this, right? I think we can, it's not being used anywhere. And now we can just say John. And let's have another one. Marco and I'll put it here. Oh, I don't need all those. Mark, yeah. And actually now this, we can have it in a short format that it's a bit more readable. Still works fine. Because basically what we are doing instead of here, and as I told you, like the syntax is very important that it's squared and then curved and then object, all those things. Sometimes it might be easier if you move them out of the array. Again, it's not something you have to do if you don't want to. You can have everything in one array. But, uh, but yeah, it's just that this, again, that, the value of that is an object with the, all those things, and we are just putting it now inside of an array. And, um, and again, because this is arrays and this is JavaScript, we can actually just still do this. And this is still valid, right? We have an array with two objects and then a string. Of course, if, if we want to print out users, this might be a bit tricky because then suddenly we don't have an object, we have a string. So we should not do this. This is just to show that we can do this. Um, yeah, and now 
I don't know, let's try to print out both names. Of course, because we can see, we can clearly see the users here, we can do this, right? This will give us the name of the first, uh, of the zero index of the first object, let's say, and this one of the index one, the object name. So this one gives us that. But because we are talking about arrays and JavaScript, and sometimes we might not even know this, right? We might not have that data, that data might be given as input or something like that. So we can actually make a for loop on that array. A equals zero, users array dot length, A plus plus. And now, now inside of here, we can, we have, oh, I should put this in the console, sorry. Actually in here, I'll print out the age, so it's different from the previous one. And I mean, as you can see here, even though we are in a for loop, we still have the properties being uh, shown by our VS code, so we can choose name and uh, age. Yeah, oh, where did it went? H. So yeah, now we have those. We should maybe even comment these two out and just duplicate this. So now we have the first element, name, and then age, second element, name, and then age. And I mean, of course we can combine it with strings. This we are, should know how to do by now, just to make things a bit prettier. Yeah, and now everything is a string. So, so yeah, we, again, objects are very good to hold specific properties that we need and uh, on this week's homework you'll figure out why because some of the exercises actually it requires to use objects and because again uh, you should not use objects just because it's cool or <laughs> because you think you should you should have a problem to solve in order to use the tool for it because all the exercises we have been doing until now they're Honestly, I don't, there is ways to use objects, but it doesn't make any sense because yeah. it's, it's that simple. It does not require uh, a complex uh, data handler. Um, I think we should make a break now and snack something. Do you guys agree?